Okay. Today we're going to talk about typographic metaphor, which is really syntax. In grammar, syntax is the manner in which words are combined to form phrases and sentences. Typographic syntax is connecting or ordering of typographic elements into a visual composition. Here's some examples by Paul Rand, Willie Kuntz, and Robert Boyle um, of typographic syntax that is impacted by the hierarchy of the design elements. The elements of design, letter, word, line, column, white space, form a cohesive whole that conveys a message. Semantics. How can formal choices syntax enhance, reinforce, or exaggerate meaning or semantic? So you can express the meaning of a word through formal choices, such as alignment, framing, symmetry, asymmetry, scale, continuation, proximity, positive, negative, compound shape, repetition, correspondence, and the list goes on. Here's some examples from designer Herb Lubalin. These were letterheads for different magazines back in mid-century. What can you tell me that you're seeing here in these examples? What's the typographic metaphor? Let me pull up the chat. You can either raise your hand or put it in the chat. This is the interactive part of our lecture. The marriage, the two R's are connected together. What are they doing? How are they behaving? Ah, uh, they're holding hands. They're holding hands, exactly. They have their, they're holding hands. And kissing, I would agree with Rain. I think they're holding hands and they're kissing. All right, they're connected, exactly. Exactly. So they're having these humanistic qualities. It feels like two people with kissing or their heads together, they're holding hands, they're connected, they're together. All right, what's happening with Mother and Child magazine? Baby in the womb. That's right. Mother's and, nurturing. And is there Go ahead. Mother's nurturing child. Yep. Or is kid. there a real picture of a child there? Yes. Nope. <laughs> no. That's, there's no. no. What is that? It looks. It looks like one of them ant signs to me. And an ampersand. Yeah, the ampersand. Yeah, it's the ampersand. Yeah, that's an ampersand that's been a little bit distorted, right? To look like perhaps a baby or a child or a mother and child. And it looks like because it's inside the O, it does look like a baby in the womb. The O is the womb. The ampersand is the baby. And yeah, definitely. And what do we have when we look at families? The eye, well, the three eyes, um, kind of the largest one uh, would be the dad, the next one would be the mom, and then the shorter one would be the little kid. But does family have three eyes in it? When we spell family, how do no. we spell family? There's not three eyes in family, right? But they took the eyes from... The, the two eyes that are in in families and and added it to the L. They added the tittle to the L. <laughs> so yeah, it's a family because they added the um, I on top of the L and we still read it as families, of course. But you can see, and I want you to really pay attention because I think these three are some of my favorite metaphors, uh, typographic metaphors, because you notice that there's no iconography added. These are all three made purely out of letter forms, nothing else. There's no other elements. There's not any, any other symbolism or iconography. It is truly just the typography that's done in a very clever and simple way to share these metaphors. Let's keep going. What do we see here? Some samples from students. 
So this first one, what are they, what is, what, are, how are they making this into a metaphor? What does that make us think oh, of? Oh, that's clever. It's knitting and the K's are woven together like they knitted it. Exactly. Right. Isn't that clever? Yes. Yeah. Flipping the K's upside down and upside right and connecting them like puzzle pieces. It feels like knitted wear. Yeah, totally. Totally. And who, what do we think of our narcissist here? Two swans. Two swans. <laughs> Two swans putting their hair together, making a heart. I read that it is but what is it at first, but it's a heart. <laughs> that's just my that's just my view. That's what I see. You see swans. Okay. But what does the word narcissist mean? Remember, this is typographic metaphor. What does narcissist mean? Trauma. <laughs> For sure. <True. laughs> Anyone who's dealt with one, yes, there's trauma there. So I don't want to be, I want to cause anyone trauma by bringing up the word. But what is, what is a narcissist? A narcissist is someone who loves themselves and has a grandiose sense of self. They think that they're, they're all that. And they have a grandiose sense of self. They are in love with themselves. And so, right, they're going to talk about themselves. I've been on too many dates with narcissists. You don't get a word in that twice. They just tell you all about themselves. <laughs> so anyway, so yeah. So here's funny. I love how they made the two S's capital letters inside a lowercase word. And then they connected them again into a heart. So, and I, I like how Rachel thought of them as snakes becoming the heart. Um, so that's also probably reading into that personality type. Okay, look at this next one. Oh, I get it. It's segregated. It's separated. It's it's purposely separating the parts of the word. That's right. And they've made each part of the word different, right? So that each part is different, and they're apart which is what segregate means. It's the metaphor of what segregate means. They're two different things that are apart, two different typefaces, two different weights, or same typeface, but two different weights, and then they're set, up, set apart. Okay, so you don't wanna settle for the obvious, but you really wanna think about this. If you notice, what do these all have in common? What when we see all of these, what do we think they all have in common? First of all, there's nothing but type used, right? There's no um, no extra iconography, no other elements added, but they're also very clever, right? Simplistic and clever. And it's like thinking through, how can we give a message using just our type? Either sometimes we're flipping the letters around, sometimes we're duplicating the letters, sometimes we're pulling things apart. Correct. There are like visual puns. Yeah, definitely. I think that's a good way to look at it. So don't, don't always like set about, it, it, it's exactly what it is, describing what the word means in a visual way. So you notice how when we were talking about your, your manifestos, I'm sharing with you to think about them in very descriptive words. So when we get into designing our manifestos, I want you to think about the words you're using in your manifesto and start thinking about the words that you think you can do visual metaphors with in your design process. So today, when we are going to meet in our small groups and share our second round, um, our final round of our, of our manifestos, I want you to go ahead and start highlighting and talking about it in your group. So what I want you to do is talk about the manifesto. Do we feel like it can be broken into eight parts? So I want you to do a couple workshoppy things together in your groups. How do I break this into eight parts? Or we're going to talk about spreads, and I'm going to have you kind of do a pagination today, taking your manifesto and breaking it into the spreads of the pages we have. We're going to talk about that in a minute. And then also thinking about what words are going to be important in the storytelling of your manifesto that we can really do some typographic metaphor with in our design process. So that's something we're gonna focus on today as we think about um, using man, um, using uh, metaphors in our design of our manifesto.